rented a small but nicely furnished country inn. Stairs lead up to the guest bedrooms. The floor is covered with sawdust and peanut shells. A barrel contains the few shells that manage to land in it. The innkeeper stares at you with an expression of fear and astonishment. It is several seconds before he speaks. This is the Hotel Mordavia. Rooms here are 15 kopecks for room and board. Pay for one week in advance. Your room will be the first room at the top of the stairs. Uh, when you want food in the morning or evening, just sit down over there by the door. Pay the innkeeper for your room and board. Thank you for your payment. It's sausage and peppers fried with garlic. They stare at you in astonishment. You say you are a hero. Well, we will judge you here by your actions rather than your words. Magic is a very dangerous thing. We do not trust those who use or are used by magic. Make certain you do not give us any more cause for alarm. Three of the townsmen huddle together. They keep looking in your direction as they talk. You suspect that they are saying something not particularly complimentary about you. I am Hans. Pleasure's all yours. I'm a farmer of pumpkins and corn and a person of great importance here in lovely Mordavia. Listen, I'm telling you, Igor's death must be avenged. Pleased to meet you. I'm Ivan, an elephant herder. Unfortunately, there are no more elephants in Mordavia, so business has kind of fallen off a tad. Guys, is it just me or is Mordavia a wonderful place? Oh, are you kidding? It's the greatest. There's many places to go, things to see. Are you kidding? Right. Let's not forget that scenic cemetery to the east of town. Everyone here is nothing but grins. Real friendly. Yeah, except we don't know you. We don't like strangers. Or anyone else that's weird and doesn't belong. Rumors. You talking to me? What rumors? Huh. There are no rumors here. Unless you count the rumor that the castle is owned by... Horse Patootie. There are no rumors in Mordavia to speak of. The town of Mordavia is a quiet place. Filled with friendly, joyful, stinky people. Well, I'm not so sure about the friendly part. We tend to be very suspicious of strangers like you. Yeah, well anyway, the town is filled with joyful and stinky people. Yeah, happy, joyful, and stinky people. Well, I wouldn't call us particularly joyful. As a matter of fact, most of us are pretty glum. Oh, very well, all right, then Mordavia is filled with people, you know, stinky ones. Yeah, many stinky people. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it many. There actually aren't very many of us around here. Oh, forget it. Well, at least he stinks. The Hotel Mordavia has been in my family for generations. It is the only place to be when darkness falls at night. Everything else is closed, and even we lock the doors. You must knock if you wish to come in. My name is Yuri Markarov. My wife's name is Bella. We are the owners of this inn. 
If you climb the stairs, your room is the first door on the right. The doors of the inn close before nightfall, so make sure you are always back before sunset. Make certain you are back in town before dusk. The gates of the town will close solidly to keep out any dangers. The Burgomeister is the mayor of the town. You will be wise to listen to what he says and stay out of trouble. There is not much for sale at the shop next door, but you may find something you need there. The monastery is to the north of here. It has been abandoned for many, many years, but it has a bad reputation. No one in town will go near it. And if you have any sense, neither will you. There are many ill things that roam this valley by night. Make certain that you never have to meet them. Never venture into the forest by night. Make certain you are back in town before dusk. The gates of the town will close solidly to keep out any dangers. The first door at the top of the stairs leads to your room. My wife will serve you supper in the evening. The curved staff has a very organic look to it. Its curves seem somehow feminine. You can feel a sense of magical power radiating all around it. Beautiful, out-of-season flowers grow all around the stone monument. You pick some flowers and put them away. The staff feels warm and almost alive in your hand. You hear an eerie voice in your head. This I must first do. The sacrifice of life for one of love. You find yourself letting go of the staff very quickly. An old stump by the side of the road makes a convenient resting place for passers-by. You find five crowns that someone hid in the hollow stump. They're covered with mold and dirt and have obviously been long since forgotten. Tall shocks of corn have been harvested and wait here to be stored for the winter. You take an ear of the corn and put it away in your pack. The villagers have erected a scarecrow to keep birds away from the newly harvested corn. You can't take the scarecrow. That would be strawberry. A heavy gate blocks the way to the winding road. Far in the distance, you can see a majestic castle. Welcome to Mordavia. It's nice to have some fresh blood around here. We so seldom see strangers. It is so difficult to get past the swamp which blocks the pass to and from the valley. We haven't had a stranger here since the rains created the swamp several years ago. 
You've obviously done quite a lot for one person. It will be interesting to see what you do around here. I am Boris Stelvich. This is the castle of the Boyars, the title of the rulers of Mordavia. It once belonged to the Borgov family for generations, but the last Borgov has been dead for many, many years. Mordavia is the name of this valley and of the town. Even the inn is called the Hotel Mordavia. The name means Dark Valley. The heads of the Borgov family were the boyars of Mordavia for ages. The last Borgov disappeared at the time of darkness. No one knows what became of him. It is bad luck to even speak of the time of darkness. Mordavia was a safe and lovely land before that time. Much has changed since then, and for the worse. Boyars are rather like barons of other lands. They own the castle and protect everyone within their domain. I'm not certain who all lives in the castle. I so seldom see anyone from there. There's the master, of course. Then there's the strange foreigner. There's also the master's daughter, I believe. And some rather strange gods. Beyond that, I really can't say. I haven't actually seen the daughter. But I know the master is quite proud of her. The master desires privacy, and I respect that wish. As I always say, <clears throat> the will of the master is the shell of the servant. <laughs> I wrote that. He is an unpleasant sort, with a short beard and moustache, and a funny hat. He is rude when giving orders, and he has the habit of staring at a person and licking his lips. Most unsavory. I have only caught glimpses of them occasionally, but I don't think they are quite human. No matter. If a man does a good job, then whether he is a man does not matter. I am the gatekeeper of Borgov Castle. Is it not true that he who guards the gates is the Keystone Speaker? This is the gate to Borgov Castle. You can see it in the distance behind here. I am here to make certain that only welcome guests may enter through here in the daytime. At night, this gate is guarded by huge necrotars, who make certain no one tries to enter without permission. The town of Mordavia is to the east of here. Turn to the east as you leave and continue until your way is blocked by rocks. Then turn north and you will find the gates of the town. Farewell, and may you find whatever you seek. Goodbye, young man. May the fireplace be warm and the drink cold at your journey's end.
You have a strange, disquieting feeling along with a sense of sorrow, longing, and unfulfilled desires as you near the lake. The briny lake seems to draw you towards it. Hello there. Could you help me? This water is so cold and I need someone to help warm me. The lake stretches out to the west as far as your eyes can see. Its crystal clear waters are probably icy cold from the mountain runoff. You stand on the shores of a vast and beautiful mountain lake. To the north and east lies the pine forest. To the south, the lake drains into a dark and dismal swamp. It is so cold here in the lake. Please come and hold me and help me to be warm again. Why don't you come to my arms so that I can give you a real greeting? Surely a hero like you will help someone like me. Please, take my hand. I am the Rizalka. Please, take my hand and help me. If you take my hand, I'll be happy to show you what the lake is like. If you take my arms, I'll be happy to talk to you about anything you'd like. You ask what a nice girl like her is doing in a place like this. It's so nice here in the water. Why don't you join me? Please, don't leave me here so alone and cold. I need you. You are in the northern part of the forest. To the north, you can see the crypts of the cemetery. The majestic mountains in the background provide a beautiful contrast to the grim gravestones and crypts of the cemetery. Here lies Janos, faithful forever to his lost true love, laid beside her empty grave. This gravestone is marked, no effort could Elissa save. She passed into a watery grave. Her body was lost, only her memory remains. An inscription on the door says, House of Lygia Po, may she rest forever. Great Scott, that rotting corpse sure gave you a fright. Fortunately, it was just a dead body, not some sort of horrible undead creature. Those only come out at night. A heavy stone door seals off the Borgov family crypt. A relief carving on the door shows the crest of the House of Borgov. The door is securely locked and feels very solid. It is deathly silent beyond the door. You examine the door closely. It's massive and well-made. A large lock secures the door. 
Above the door is an intricate crest with a single word, Borgov, above it. You apply your shoulder to the crypt door with a mighty heave. It won't budge. That's one heavy door. Two spare coffins await their customers here. Apparently Igor has finally managed to get ahead of business. A fresh grave has recently been opened here. Arkin Tenor walked at night. Arkin saw his final sight. Now the question seems to be, what in the world did Tenor see? Here lies the body of Carry Nation, who answered a vampire's invitation. Now this cause for lamentation, it was a fatal recreation. Here lies the spirit of Barney Blue. To his lover was untrue. So she knew just what to do. Fixed herself some Barney stew. The inscription on this headstone reads, Michael Med bumped his head in another man's bed. Now he's dead. Rest in peace. This headstone reads, On a dare, Pasha Sperry spent the night in the cemetery. Something gave him such a fright that now he sleeps here every night. Tell the creature it's called the Lishi. Ah, that's the price of too much fame. Now you've gone and guessed my name. Lishi, Lishi, look and see. In a bush or up a tree. Lishi, Lishi, riddle rhyme. Can you solve them every time? You are in the forest somewhere southeast of the town. To the north, you can see a beautiful garden and a gently flowing stream. You have come to a beautiful garden deep within the forest. A stream flows gently in a loop around the central island. Feelings of peace and harmony permeate the area. Someone has dug a large hole there, perhaps removing a bush or a small tree. A waterfall tinkles gently down the rocky slope. The stream is wider and slower at this point. It almost looks like a small pond. It's an ornate oriental lantern. You discover 30 crowns hidden there. You accept it as a gift from Irana. Ah. 
After some rest, you feel better. The fruit tree is laden with luscious looking fruits of many kinds. It must be one of the rare mixed fruit trees. As you approach the tree, the fruit vanishes. Must be that low calorie kind. Lovely flowers bloom throughout the garden. You pick a few of the beautiful flowers. After some rest, you feel better. The bridge connects the pathway to the central island. One, two, and two make six. A little bush is in a fix. If you save a plant from goo, I can help you with a clue. After some rest, you feel better. There's only a certain amount of punishment your body can stand on any given day. Enough pain, enough gain for now. Try again tomorrow. That was fun. Well, that was fun. Well, that was fun. That was fun. Well, that was fun.
that was fun. You need to work on that aim a bit. You hear movement on the other side of the door. After a few minutes, you hear someone removing the bar and unlocking the bolts on the other side of the door. The inhabitants of the inn eye you suspiciously. You get the feeling that you're not particularly welcome here. Dinner tonight is garlic stew with vegetables. I am well. My wife keeps the kitchen and I keep the inn. Together we make the Hotel Mordavia the best place to stay in all this valley. They come in here in the evening to talk, to drink and relax. My wife prepares and serves two hearty meals a day. I am sure you will find them satisfying. Just sit down in the chair by the door and Bella will be happy to serve you. Garlic is our national vegetable. We all love garlic around here, don't we, my friends? <laughs> of course! Hey, everyone loves garlic! Yeah! It's stinky! It's a country's flower! I don't care much for garlic. I don't remember asking. You know, we don't get many strangers here, now that the pass outside's been cut off. He's right. We don't trust ones who come here by unknown means. Yeah, particularly strangers we don't know. We tend to be kinda suspicious of strangers, and I think I'm looking at one right now. Yeah, that's why we made a sign that says strangers are unwelcome and unwanted. Right. And in our own subtle way, we try to get across the fact that we don't like them very much. Strangers bring bad luck. Strangers bring trouble. Actually, the last stranger brought a jester's hat and a staff, but we still don't trust him. Anything else you want to know, stranger? You know, there's another stranger in town besides you. Oh, and let me tell you, he is very strange, okay? Strange? The dude ain't even human. No one knows how he got here or why he came. No one knows where he goes during the day or who he's trying to meet, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and he tells jokes. At least I think he does. Yeah, he says he's a real jester. He dresses like Sonny Bono. And he acts like a gnome. He is a gnome, Einstein. The town of Mordavia is a very safe place to be, gotta tell ya. Oh yeah, you got nothing to fear within the walls of the town. Other than the old monastery. Yeah, the old monastery. As long as you don't venture into the old monastery, you'll be safe as milk in this town. As long as you don't even think of getting near the old monastery, you're gonna be okay. Did I, uh, mention the monastery door? Oh, yeah, right. The monastery door. Look, as long as you don't go near the monastery door... In fact, nowhere near the monastery. Don't even think about it. You'll be perfectly safe in the town of Mordavia. Hey, look. There's nothing wrong with us. Yeah, we're okay. We've been tested. Well, 
to tell you the truth, I do feel a cold sore coming on. Hey, Mordavian nights are dangerous. Oh, he's right, you know. Nobody goes out at night, except my girlfriend, but she's working. Her and a few ghosts, and revenants, a wraith, and vampire or two. Hold it, put it in part. There are no vampires in Mordavia. <laughs> vampires in Mordavia. Who ever heard of such nonsense? I hate to burst your bubble, but my Uncle Fred was bitten by a vampire once. Your Uncle Fred's alive and well and retired till Silmaria, hello? Yeah, I know him. He sends you a postcard every harvest time saying, Where's my $20? Well, he had a miraculous recovery. They nod at you in response. You've never seen so many locks and bars on a door. You can't find any way to open it. It is very dangerous in Mardavia at night. We always keep things locked up when it gets dark. I will let you out for now. If you wish to return later this evening, just knock on the door. If you do not make it back by the closing of the inn, may you rest in peace.